Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Alpha of the Eagle channel. My name is Matt, and it's Book Review Monday, and we're going to be taking a look at The Path of Daggers, the eighth book in Robert Jordan's epic Wheel of Time series. Um, before we go on, just want to talk about a few things. First and foremost, this Thursday, I'm going to be doing this new series on Thursdays. Um, I'll be taking a look at A Song of Ice and Fire versus Game of Thrones... Uh, the HBO show, uh, doing this whole series on kind of like the art of adaptation and um, things that are justified to remove, things that are not, um, and kind of like how, how well did it translate to screen. Anyway, uh, and then I just wanted to mention, because uh, those are the only two things that will be coming out. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and when you hit that uh, subscribe button, make sure you click the bell icon as well to be notified when things uh, show up. Okay, uh, so let's head into The Path of Daggers, Robert Jordan's eighth book in the Wheel of Time series. Now, I want to make a statement that last week I said that The Crown of Swords was the shortest book in the series, excluding New Spring. That is not true, and I'd like to correct that. The Path of Daggers, according to word count, is actually the shortest book in the series um and even though it's the shortest book in the series it didn't feel like it anyway <laughs> so let's go on um so this was published in 1998 and uh, like i said shortest book in the series and it's separated into four different storylines here main storylines uh and uh, it kind of picks up almost immediately where the last one left off okay now, um, we're going to start with the story of Elaine, uh, Nynaeve, and Avienda, which I think I'm still saying wrong. I'll check, but I, I really I can't remember if I fixed the way I said that. And it's not in the glossary this time. Anyway, their story, by far to me, was one of the more interesting ones and there's really not much to it the four storylines that are in this this book there's not much to these storylines so they're using the bowl of the winds as you remember uh the dark one has this stranglehold of manipulation on the weather of uh of the world and they're trying to find the strangle of the bowl of the winds they're going to use it they're going to break that uh that that hold that the Dark One has over this. Now they use this, it's actually a very interesting scene, and I think it happens almost right away in the book, part of the prologue, I think. And the stranglehold that the Dark One has over the environment is broken. And after that happens, soon after that happens, the Shanchen attack uh, and they invade. Elaine, um, Avienda, and Nineveh are able to escape. There are some tiny bits of details here and there that um, I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they seem to pan out the tiny details here. The, when I give these broad plots, I do more so the stuff that I think is going to carry over into the next books. Um, and uh, they escape, and Elaine begins to stake her claim to the throne of Andor. Uh, and in fact, she's not, I don't think she's very happy when she hears the rumors that Rand is saving the throne for her. And she's like, uh, who does he think he is? Anyway, so that's that. And that is pretty much the end of Elaine's story. And I call it Elaine's story because she does kind of feature the most in there. And you see a lot of the chapters through her point of view uh, as far as as far as her character goes. Now we're going to go over to Perrin. Perrin, a, a character that I've had problems with in the past, actually has, to me, uh, grown in this story as far as interest. And so I'm looking over here because my notes are over here, by the way. But um, he moves to Gelden. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. He wants to halt a guy named uh, Massima Dagar. And I think that's also pronounced correctly, but let me check. Uh, this is the... The, the Prophet of the Dragon. He's shown up in other uh, books. And um, he's kind of really where this, where a, an idea of a fanatical religion comes in to, um, to the Wheel of Time. He showed up in book five, talking to Nynaeve and Elaine. Um, yes, that was book five. 
And um, you just got a little taste of, of who he is. And even though he's this religious fanatic in Fires of Heaven, he kind of swears quite a bit. Oh, swears in Wheel of Time sense. And, and Nynaeve keeps telling him, you know, watch your language. Anyway, uh, they're trying to halt him because he has this this force of people that's it's kind of threatening. And, and he wants to see the dragon. Uh, so Perrin moves to halt him. And on his way, he rescues uh, Queen Morghese, who was deposed uh, in book four. She's deposed in book four, or book five, sorry. It's one of the two. All these books start to mesh after a while. And she's in disguise along with her aides and um, Linny, her aide there. And um, as Perrin goes on, he gains the allegiance uh, from Aleandre. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, that's the Queen of Geldon, and she joins in uh, the force that Perrin has. As time goes on, Fa'il, after being separated from Perrin for a little bit, is captured by the Shido Ail, and um, that's really kind of where the Perrin story leaves off. Um, Edwin's story is real short. She really just uses her power as the Emerlin's seat to manipulate the Rebel Tower to give her more control before they head on to the siege of Tarvalon. Uh, this this idea of the Rebel Tower is still happening. This started in Book 4, and um, she's being fed a lot of information from um, the her, her predecessor, whose name is escaping me. I should have written it down. Um, Suyan Sanche. That's it. So... Um, she gains more control. Rand's story is pretty much what I would consider to be the war story of this book. He attempts to repel a Shantan invasion over, um, sorry, a Shantan invasion. After many like pushes and pulls, it's very much a tug of war type feel. Uh, he has to pull back. Uh, he, he is wielding, wielding Kalendor at this time, uh, and it forces basically a stalemate. And when he returns to Kerhine, he's attacked by traitors, uh, the Ashaman traitors, mainly led by Dashiva, I believe. And um, uh, throughout this whole book, Matt is absent. Um, he is absent. He was grievously wounded at the end of book seven, something I forgot to mention in last week's video. I'm sorry about that. And he is absent from this one. So... This is the shortest book, so I'm going to have a shorter video today because there's not much to say. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, this one kind of bored me. Even though there is these intense, interesting battle sequences, this, this addition to Wheel of Time really kind of bored me. And this, I was researching this on Goodreads, and I see a lot of... Uh, divisiveness through this book. We talked about divisiveness with uh, Sword of Truth a lot. We have never really talked about it in Wheel of Time, and that's because there really isn't that much divisiveness in Wheel of Time as far as the quality of the books. Um, there are people who don't like them, but they're usually outweighed by the enormous amount of people who love them. However, Path of Daggers, as I've looked on, um, on Goodreads, I can definitely tell you there's a lot of people who do not like this book. Or they say it's okay, it's not really wonderful, it's fine. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who hate how Robert Jordan handled women in The Path of Daggers and how his female characters truly suffer in this one. And I'm not talking about the plot, uh, the writing of the, the female characters in this one is not as good as some of the other ones. Um, and some of the actions that are taken by, by especially those who are still within the excuse me, within the White Tower, are confusing. But anyway, um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. For me, uh, I read this one rather quickly because of certain events going on in my life at the time, um, but it was still really boring. It, it's the shortest book, and it feels like one of the longest ones. So what are my pros of this? Because I should have some pros. Uh, the battle scenes are very well written. I've said that about all of them. The battle scenes are really well written. And Perrin, I think, grows quite a bit in this one. Um, I'm not surprised the battle scenes are well written. I mean, Robert Jordan himself graduated from the Citadel. And um, he's basically trained to write stuff like this. And it's very clear what's happening. It's just that the battle scenes didn't really grab me in this book. I, I just felt like there was a lot missing for me here 
in the Path of Daggers. Um, the biggest con I have with the book, no map. Um, he is kind of the only, what I consider to be, and this is just my opinion now, to be one of the only human elements in the book. Everyone seems to have this um, idea of self-importance going on here in Wheel of Time. Uh, even Perrin, to some extent, he is the one who, he's fighting his self-importance, but every once in a while he does feel like he's he's rising really high. Uh, I feel with Matt like he's still kind of the guy we knew from the beginning. And I know your characters want to have growth, but I, I really felt like um, like he's really the only reminder of what once was. And I missed that in this book. Uh, thankfully, he's back in the next one. Spoilers. Um the book really feels like it drags. Uh, we talked about this last week with A Crown of Swords. So, books 7 through 10 are often called by many of the fans the slog. This one definitely has that feeling. Crown of Swords was interesting. It had some stuff that kept me invested in the book. This one I kept I kept reading because, like I said, there was something going on in my life while there were, well, no, oh, I'm sorry, when there was just nothing else to do. So, and uh, it was just, it dragged. I was forcing myself to read through the chapters. And yet, to me, there's there's not enough important going on in this book. Uh, the This book feels like it has no plot. Uh, the plot is Rand is trying to push back a Shanshan invasion. Okay. But it also feels like some of the other stuff is just moving you from point A to point B. We talked about this with Sword of Truth, how some books feel like it's just getting you to the conclusion. Uh, I feel like that way with um, Shadow Rising, though there were some very important things that happened in the Shadow Rising. Uh, here, it, it's it's really, this just feels like a traveling book. This And what I mean by that is, this book could be summed up in a prologue. And, and speaking of prologues, let, let's just talk about something. I don't understand the reason to have a prologue that lasts, I'm getting to the table of contents, um, uh, hundreds of page, uh, 100 pages in the following books. I think this is the last book to have a short prologue. This one was a prologue of 30 pages. That's fine. But we're going to get into some books later on. I'm pointing at board games. I don't know why. We're going to get some books later on that the prologues are just, they're too long. They're way too long. It's almost like a, you just should, could have had a short story in between. That's a rant for next week and for some other weeks to come. Um, the books are getting very dense. Now, this is something that I have talked about before. The, the over-analysis of details feels like, you know, great classic literature at some points. And while that's a good thing, here for me it didn't work. Uh, and this is a complaint I'll probably have about the other books. I appreciate the detail Robert Jordan is bringing to his world. I appreciate the style of writing which he uses to describe what he's bringing to his world. However, there is a limit, and I think we've reached it. In Path of Daggers, I started going, I can't take this anymore. I can't take the over explanations. Granted, I have this very specific view of how the world operates and looks. But what I'm missing is plot. And what I have to say is I also don't appreciate a conversation starting three paragraphs of description of the room and place they're in, and then the conversation beginning again later. I appreciate the description. Please do it before the conversation starts. Because by the time you pick up the conversation again, I've forgotten where we were. And I just, I, I did not care for it. It's something that happens in the rest of the series that Jordan writes. And I'm saying that because I have not yet gotten to um, the Sanderson books. Overall, I was bored with Path of Daggers. Uh, every series has a, a kind of a, a decline. Everyone, I've talked about this with Sword of Truth, had some really uh, big duds in there. For me, Path of Daggers was slow. It was a slog. Um, and there wasn't enough happening in here to merit a book, in my opinion. Now, if you love this book, fantastic. I'm very happy that you enjoy it because I would never tell you, wow, your taste sucks. No, I'm not going to say that. My opinion, however, was this one could have been 
a prologue. It really could have because um, I just didn't think there was enough to merit a book. That's just me. All right. Well, I told you this video was going to be shorter than some of the other ones, and that's because the book is the shortest. Uh, next week is another short book, Winter's Heart. Now, a bit of a spoiler here. That one is a great improvement on Wheel of Time. Uh, sorry, on Wheel of Time, on Path of Daggers. So, take a look on Thursday for the continuation of that series where I talk about the art of adaptation um, as far as fantasy goes, because sometimes that's one of the hardest ones to adapt properly. And then next week, we'll be taking a look at Winter's Heart, Wheel of Time, book nine. See you then, everybody.